Well, we're coming into the last third of the season, and things could be better from a health point of view. We've had quite a few injuries to quite a few key players. Nothing really long-term except for the one, but it's definitely affected our game performance the past few weeks. We'll take a look at that, and then today we have a game against Malaga B and a game against Cordoba, and that could decide who finishes top of the table. But then again, it's the Segunda B. As long as you finish top four, you're fine. My name is FM Jellico, and it's time to get real. Well, I've been trying a couple of different things with regards to recording and whatnot, so hopefully these next few episodes will start sounding better. Uh, the house is actually fairly quiet today. The wife is out shopping. The kids are out playing. Hopefully there won't be any weird background noises going on. And I've got my filters all fixed, I think. So, that said, we last played Menciaro and Badajoz, and we won both of those games. We were then away at Best Deportivo. This, this was a bummer of a game. They had a player sent off in the 79th minute right after we scored to equalize, and we just could not get the winner. A one-off draw was just annoying as heck. And then we were homing a smart bea, and we absolutely laid an egg. Kike Clemente got sent off on a double yellow. Andres Pereira went out with uh, torn knee ligaments. He's out the next eight weeks. Well, six weeks now, but it was eight weeks when he injured it. And then uh, we were away at Recreativo, and we drew one all thanks to a goal by Paul Ballesteros in the fifth minute. Uh, against uh, UCAM Mercia, we won 3-1. Against Sevilla Atletico, we won 4-2. This was a game we had to come back in. They were 2-0 up in the 59th minute. Javalilo scored in the 67th minute. Carrion scored in the 71st minute to tie it. Poato and Israel Iglesias both got extra time goals. The Iglesias win was just salt on the wound for them. It was really kind of annoying. The Marbella game... That was disappointing as heck because they're not the best. I mean, they're in the relegation zone. They're, they're fighting relegation, and we just we should have beat them. We've played 31 matches. Our 67 goals are still first best in the league. Our 27 goals allowed have, have dropped us down to sixth. Our defense has really fallen off, especially with the injuries. Pedro Ruiz leads us with 19 goals and a 7.44 rating. Alex Robles and Javi Poato, each with 10 assists. Uh, Pedro Ruiz and Poato, each with five players in the match. Robles has 10 yellow cards. Uh, the other thing I've noticed the past four games is uh, Carrion has absolutely decided that no matter what the heck is going on, he is going to try and play his way out of trouble, which is really annoying because he doesn't have that as a con. But I have seen more games where he has been surrounded by one or two players, and instead of dropping it off to Robles in the back, for help, he's tried getting by them. And it's cost us goals in games. I literally watched as he kicked the ball off a defender who then ran the ball down, lumped it forward, and the other team got a goal. It was actually in the Marbella game that that happened. And it's just been really, really annoying. Medically-wise, if I go to the current injuries, Alvaro Sanz is out with food poisoning. He'll be back. Uh, Paul Ballesteros, groin strain. He was out for a little while. Andres Barreras sprained his knee ligaments. But if you go to the injury history here and you sort by date... The last game we played uh, live was between uh, the games here. So since then, uh, Yardi had the flu, Clemente had a tight calf, Barrera sprained his knee ligaments, Musa Banda, Musa Banda rather, pulled an abdominal muscle, he was out for a couple weeks, Mizzin was out for a couple weeks, Polve Steros is out for a couple weeks, H was out for, with a couple of days with a bruised ankle, Sands is out with food poisoning. It's just been enough injuries that our performance has really dropped off a bit. So, and that really doesn't help us because today, as I said in the intro, we are playing Malaga B. We are playing Cordoba. Cordoba is now two points behind us. Malaga B is a solid squad on 47 points. They're fighting to get in the promotion area. So we've got our work cut out for us. So I'm going to uh, set my best healthy 11, set the reserves, and we're going to come back for a match against Malaga B in just a bit. Well, it's not my most match-fit best 11, but it is my healthiest best 11. De La Cazada and goal. Banda, Clemente, Garonio, and Robles is the defensive back four. And Gulo and Sagato is the midfielders. Yardi and Havalilo is the attacking midfielders. Pato and Ruiz up top as the strikers. Clemente on the throw-in to Havalilo. Back to Clemente. He sends it in. Pato is there, but it's knocked away. Ismail sends it up into space. Villadrez is going to run that down for Malaga. He's got help now. Ramon is there. 
out to Jaime on the left in the box. Knocked away. Yardy sends it back to De La Calzada. That was interesting. Clemente, back to De La Calzada. He brings it forward up to Garonio. He sends it forward towards Ruiz, who heads it down to Poato. That was lucky. Poato drives forward, cuts through the defense, takes a long looping shot that is really, really wide right. Half hour in, no other highlights to speak of other than that wide miss by Poato. No, here we go. Angulo sends it in the crowd, and it is knocked over the crossbar. We have not had any shots on target. And that was a very, very quiet first half. Malaga Beast had five shots, three on target. We've had four and one. We've had a decent possession advantage. We just have not been able to do anything with it. Kickoff highlight. Juan Day. All the way back to Kellyanne. Holds it up, sends it out to Jaime, who heads it down to Adrian. Sends it up into space, but Garonio is going to run that down. Kicks it over to Banda, who gives it away to Juan Day. Oh, Juan Day gives it right back to Clemente. Taps up to Yardi, who sends it up into space. Poirot got between the defenders. Takes the shot, Killian with a nice save. Ismail in front of the goal just boots that out of bounds. Coming up on 60 minutes here, I'm going to make a couple of changes. Havalilo is not having the best game, so we're going to bring Echu on. Robles is not having the best game either, so I'm going to bring on Delgado. Ismail on the throw-in. Garonio knocks it away. Adrian to Ramon. Knocked away again. Again, Malaga has it. Ismail on the right sends it in. Villadez is there, but he heads it over the crossbar. That looked like it was going in there for a second. And I tell the guys to push forward, and they are frustrated. Band is down to 66%, but uh, it's looking like a nil-nil draw here. And having said that out loud, watch them score now. <sighs> yep, a nil-nil draw. 11 shots, 4 on target for us. 10 shots, 4 on target for them. 63% possession advantage, and we got nothing from it. Guys, that was a dis disappointing performance. Well, the good news is Cordoba's in a week. Well, five days. So we should be a little bit healthier for that. So I am going to uh, go through that. I think we got the youth intake coming up soon, too. So uh, if that happens, we will definitely highlight that. Back in a bit. And it is the youth intake. Let me switch over here to the left side. And it is not so good. Uh, Damien Rafael Garcia. One star current ability, three and a half star potential ability. Attacking midfielder on the right. Okay, agility. Okay, acceleration. Nice pace. Stamina is lacking. Strength is really lacking. Determination's good. <sighs> Technically, could be a lot better. Then again, 16 years old. Jose Luis Martin, defensive center back. Love the 17 determination. Physically, solid so far. Marking and tackling, not bad. He's got he's got some potential. Jose Perez. Keeper. One star current ability, three star potential ability, a backup at best, assuming we keep getting promoted. He'd be a good Gilgo keeper for the last level of football we were at. Angel Lopez. I think this will be the last one. Uh, Jesus Angel Jimenez. We'll take a look at him. Not a whole lot of good going on there. His natural fitness is good. He could be one of those players who could really develop into something. I wonder if this is one of those cases where the two and a half stars is just wrong. He's low in a lot of areas. The four leadership is, you know, when the four leadership is your worst, man, well, okay, the five concentration is not good either, but you can work on that. That's not bad. That's actually not bad. Something tells me this is one of those guys who's better than the two and a half star potential. And then Angel Lopez. Yeah, the three determination is an absolute killer there. I don't know that we're going to look at anybody. I mean, we'll look at Juan Jesus. And I'm not really impressed. A striker with five finishing. Okay. Not the best youth intake, is it? But, you know, then again, we don't have the best, the best uh, 
youth recruitment or anything like that. So we're, we're working on it. We'll get it better. Once we start getting some money, we'll, we'll, we'll get that better. Back in a bit. Well, by dint of beating us earlier in the season, I want to say Cordoba is currently in first, even though we are tied at 70 points apiece. And like I said earlier, it's, it's not a big deal. As long as we finish in the top four, we're in the promotion playoffs. That's what we're aiming for this year. We're back a little bit healthier. Uh, Dale calls out on goal. Banda Clemente, Garonio, and Robles as the defensive back. Four Sands and Segato as the midfielders. Yardi and Carrion as the attack midfielders. Plato and Ruiz up top as the strikers. Perez to Garrido for Cordoba. Back to Perez. Sends it in through the box. Someone couldn't get to it. And it's because Banda stuck his leg out and tripped the Cordoba player. Oh, Dale Calzada. Nice stop. Well done. Perez sends it in. Garrido's there, but he heads it over the crossbar. Nice stop by Dale Calzada. Sands to carry on. Back to Sands. Over to Sagato. Up to carry on. He's got help. He uses it. Robles is there. Stops it from going out of bounds. Barely. Up to carry on inside of the box. He holds it up, crosses it in. Yardy's there. Far post over the Cordoba keeper. That was nice. Robles did well to stop it from going out of bounds. Got carry on in. He must have heard me talking about him because in the past he would have bounced it right off that guy. Yardy, a nice header in the far side. Let me see if I can't get him back for next season. We'll try that here in a minute. Cara sends it forward. Carrion heads it down to Ruiz. Sends it up. Poato got between the defenders. Goalkeeper's out. And Poato hits the post. And it caroms in for the goal. His 17th of the season. Should probably try and get him re-signed too. Well, at least on a transfer contract. We'll have to see. He and Ruiz have been a nice partnership. I think they each... Well... Ruiz has 19 goals. Pato now has 17. So they're, they've more than made up for Miguel Martin, that's for sure. Half hour in. I don't see. I don't want to say we're thoroughly dominating Cordoba. They do have the possession advantage. They got five shots, three on target. We've been technically better, though. We've had eight and six. That, however, did not look like it. Banda skies his shot cro uh, over the crossbar. Halftime. Nine shots, six on target for us. Five and three for them. We got a couple shots in at the... At the last part of the half. Adela Calzada, the hero of the game so far with a save from the Verdun penalty. Uh, Hardy and Poato both with goals. Four minutes apart. We're doing really well. Tell Bandit to quit sticking his leg out and tripping people in the box. Fernandez on the throw for Cordova to Perez. Back to Fernandez. Trabazo has it. Challenge. Gives it back to Fernandez. Samiento kicks the ball away. Goes right to Banda. Clemente gives it away to Meso. Oh, he's forced to give the ball away to Sands, who holds it up. Long pass. Don't know what he was. He was probably aiming to pass it in space, which I don't have turned on. Perez drives through and blasts a shot over the crossbar. They're they're really they're pressing is what they're doing. About sixty minutes in, we're gonna make a couple of changes here. We're going to get Banda off and bring on Rochi. Rochi can play defensive left back. Not great, but he can. And then... You know what? We're going to bring Gronio over and make him the central defender he likes to be. We're going to bring Sagato back. And then we're going to get Angulo on. And take off Clemente. Because I can't afford to go a player down. I tell the guys to concentrate. They're overwhelmed by the feedback. All I'm telling them is pay attention to what you're doing. Five minutes left in the game. Cordoba's fired up from their feedback. They don't seem to be pressing or pushing any higher. Though. Well, now there they go. They moved a couple players up to attack. Carrion took a knock, but he bounced back pretty quickly. And we win 2 0. A solid, solid game. 12 shots, 8 on target. They're 9 and 3. They just did not do anything the second half. And a decent home crowd, too. 6,500.
Well, okay, 6,000 were ours. Cordoba actually traveled, which makes sense. Geographically, they're fairly close, if I remember correctly. And that takes us top of the league. It's 73 points. Three points ahead of Cordoba. Yeah, I think we're almost assured of promotion. It's going to be clinched here in a couple of weeks. We've got five more matches left. And it's, I'm almost positive we're going to make the playoffs. So what I'm going to do is play these next five games offline. We'll come back for the playoffs unless we absolutely fall apart. Then we'll come back for Aldo Shiraz. And, you know, anything's possible. Um, stuff happens. You know, it's FM. Anything can happen. So, and that's what we are going to do. So, uh, a couple of solid games for us. The Malaga game was a bit disappointing, but it wasn't a loss. And nobody got injured, which at this stage is... Pretty much all I'm looking for. No injuries, no really bad losses. As long as the guy's confidence isn't shaken, we'll be doing okay. Budget-wise, I know I uh, didn't mention this earlier, but we could be doing a little bit better. We're negative 300,000 euros in the in the red. Um, we're 150,000 euros in the red for this season. And if I remember correctly, I'm not seeing it, which probably means there isn't, but I'm not seeing any... Uh, any uh, money for where you finish we've got 250,000 K coming in from sponsorship income yeah it's gonna be a little tough but we should be doing okay so that said if you did like what you've seen and heard please have a like subscribe to the channel for more content questions criticisms comments leave those down below I will answer those as fast as I can my name is FM Jellico and I thank you